I remember once I wore a dress for a week and a half straight because I was obsessed with it and I was probably four. I'm from Oakville, which is 20 minutes west of Toronto in Canada. Everybody is very traditional things that you expect when you grow up. You have a very traditional upbringing. So I went from like small town but close to Toronto, which is essentially Canadian New York, to like way out on the east coast, Nova Scotia. But it's awesome. It has the most bars per capita in like two block radius in all of Canada. I wanted to move here to sort of pursue fashion in some realm. It kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things. I loved color theory. That class was like so fascinating to me and I didn't think that I was any good at that sort of thing. It was nice to realize that you could sort of kind of roll with the punches and learn as you go, which is something I'm still very much doing. I love fabric. I'm kind of obsessed with it. So that's where the inspiration starts to actually become something. You know, I'll draw and I'll take sort of color references and other, you know, I'll have sort of a theme or an idea that I want to convey, but you know, when I get fabrics and when I start actually like envisioning what they can do, that it starts to actually take shape. I found it so interesting that like the associations that you have with color and the way that it sort of plays into your interactions with people and I wear a lot of makeup. So I guess if I do wear something, I like to make it count. <laughs> which is kind of what happens with my clothes too. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I don't wear, you know, tons of, I don't really pile things on. I don't wear tons of sort of statement things in the sense that you might assume, but you know, if I'm gonna wear a jacket, it's gonna be a hell of a jacket. I just, I remember there being a shift where it became important to me to focus on things that have an interesting silhouette or have something happening other than what you would traditionally see in terms of color or pattern. Skirt is actually a new, it's a new skirt, it's from The Row, and I, I actually really love The Row. Mm -hmm. It's very much my aesthetic, because I think it's awesome and it's beautiful, and it's like, it's just cut so well. Shoes and bags, I, I love, because um, they're really, it's really easy to transform something. This could be very office-like, not your average office, but office-esque, but these I think give it a little spice. I usually buy sort of boots and more kind of like heavy duty type shoes, but these were just so awesome. And I love the color combination. The sweater is mine. I wanted the sweaters to feel really like three dimensional and very solid. Someone asked me if that was my Canadian heritage that was making me do that, and I guess maybe it is on a subconscious level. That pink stag head, it takes something that might otherwise be a little bit harsh or a little rugged, and it makes it kind of hilariously feminine. I think it says that I don't take myself too seriously. Generally speaking, a huge country fan, but that said, if people play me a song and I like it, I like it. It should be an emotional reaction as opposed to like, you know, I like this artist and I listen to this and only this, so. I mean, my dad has always been a huge music fan and some of these records are, were a gift from him for Christmas. He used to be a DJ at um, University of Toronto, so a lot of them came from University of Toronto's personal collection, and now they're in mine. My fiance j jokes because I literally I'll come home from a bar at like four in the morning and I read, because it's just a habit. Like I just I get into bed and I have to read something. I, every every night that I come home, I read. People always say oh, I don't have time to read. I don't do this. I'm like, well, you can, but you need to be really dedicated to the cause at four in the morning. Right now, I'm reading East of Eden again. It's my favorite. I love that book. It just feels like a huge journey. I took a trend spotting class, trend forecasting class, and I just thought it was so interesting because there are so many things that go into it, but it's it does all come down to a company or a group of people saying, this is what we've found that is like the zeitgeist, I guess, and people sort of, I mean, I think it's important that you take it for what it is. And, you know, I like to watch what people are doing and I like to watch what's happening around me to get sort of your inspiration from and your sort of direction. I'm trying to have like a more emotional reaction as opposed to like a, you know, this is gonna be successful or this is gonna be a big thing. I take more inspiration from other sort of creative elements. Leading up to the presentation and leading up to, you know, when I'm finalizing my designs and stuff like that and I'm putting it all together and styling it, I don't look at anything else. It feels good. I mean, it feels like a huge accomplishment. You feel like you've did, done something really great and it's exciting. But yeah, there's definitely a sense of like, kind of, uh, I don't know, it's almost like you've created something and sent it off and then you're 
alone.